hi guys welcome to my youtube channel in today's video we will learn about if else action in power automate desktop so please watch this video till the end so that you can understand it completely and if you have not subscribed my youtube channel please subscribe it so let's get started in power automate under the conditionals we have some actions for example case default case else else if if and switch but in today's video we will see about if else okay so i will just drag the if condition and here you can see that it says that marks the beginning of a block of action that is run if the condition is specified in this statement is met right and then it asks you to provide the first operand and then operated and second operand right so for now i will click on cancel so first what i will do is i will take a set variable and here i'll name this variable as for example var1 and i will put hello okay and i'll select this action and press ctrl c to copy this action and then press ctrl v to paste this action right now let me rename this variable and here i will give the value as hello in capital letter okay now what i will do is i will use the if condition and in the if condition first i will use if new var1 equal to okay i'm just checking if these two variables are having same value okay then i'll choose new var2 and then click on save and then i will use the display message right so here i'll come to the message box and then use the display message and here in this display message box you can see there are several parameters right so let's say message box title i can put variable or maybe we can put conditionals in the message box we can display that we can display both the values right new var1 and then press enter to go to the next line and then i will choose new var2 right and here you can see that when you click on a uh, variable icon you see that there are multiple attributes right in new var1 we have one attribute which is called dot length which means it will give you the length of the value right another one is is empty which means it tells that whether this variable is empty or not which will return, return the boolean value it will be in true and false and then next you see that it has two upper right and when you expand the two upper here you see that it gives you an option to show length is empty and then it gives you an option to convert it to two upper and two lower right so like this we have multiple options we will look uh, we will see about that in few minutes okay for now i will just click on cancel and here you can see that in the message box icon it gives you an option to choose from so what icon do you want to show so it can be none or it can be information it can be question right it can be warning and it can be also an error for now i will just choose the information and here you have multiple options as well in the message box buttons so it gives you an option to ok ok cancel yes no yes no cancel all these options you can choose for now i will keep just ok cancel 
and see default button so default button means that so first button second button and third button so for example if you have here you can see that you have three buttons right the maximum you have three buttons and minimum you have one button right and that's why it is giving you an option to choose like which button should be highlighted right so the control on that button will be there so for now i will just keep it as first button which means it will have control on ok button and the next option is keep the message box always on top which means when you check this option then if you are trying to go to some other window right still this message box will be on top and in the background you will be able to access that window and the next option we have is close message box automatically which means if you select this option you can specify the number of seconds you want to make that message box to appear on the screen and then automatically it will disappear and then you have an option to then the if you click on some button then the value of the button will be stored in the button pressed right so for example if i click on ok right then the button pressed will have value of ok but if you click on cancel then the button pressed variable will have cancel as a value and here you see that it gives you an option to choose what should we do when there is an error right and so this kind of error handling is uh, action based right so that is why here you have an option to choose a try action if an error occurs so you can enable this how many times do you want to try one time two time you can specify that as well and here you can specify interval right so after every so let's say if i specify five which means so number of tries and i keep the number of times two so every after five seconds this action will be retried okay so i'll disable it for now and we will see about this error handling later in the video okay i'll create a separate video for this and there you i will explain each and everything for now i will just click on return to parameters and then i will click on save and let's run the bot and here you can see that these values are not same that is why it did not go inside and display the message but so let's do one thing so you know that new var2 is having the value in the capital letter correct so what i have to do is i have to convert the case of new var1 to the capital letter right so i can choose the two upper so now you see that how the syntax looks like it is new var1 dot two upper which means it will convert the value of new var1 to the upper letter and then it will make the comparison i will click on save and then I will run the bot. Now you see that it has shown the value. Right? So what it has done is first it has it did not change the value of new air one, right? Still, when it displayed the message in the message box, it was printed in the small letter, right? But it has converted the value of new where one to the upper letter while making the comparison right and that is why this check was passed right okay so the next and here you can see that button pressed is okay because i have chosen that the first button will be the default one and here i have told that okay message box will be always on top and message will be message box will be automatically closed after three seconds right and that is why the button pressed is having the value of okay correct okay so let's do one thing now what i will do is i'll make this 
variable empty and in power automate desktop if you want to you know if you do not want to set any value to a variable in that case you have to set it like this you have to use double percentage sign and inside that you need to put single quotes but if you do not enter double percentage sign and single quotes inside it then you see what will happen it will give error so it says that parameter 2 cannot be empty right so you have to always make sure that you are having some you know you are entering like this percentage sign and then inside it you need to enter the single quotes okay so what I will do is let's I will change it to is empty right and from here I will drag and drop the else block right and then I will copy this action highlight the end field so that it paste set inside the else block right and here what I will do is I will just print you know new var 2 okay so now the condition is that if new var 1 dot 2 upper which means after converting the value of new var 1 to upper letter if it is empty then you need to execute this action right and if if it is not empty then it has to come to the else block and it has to display the value so for example so let's run the bot and see what happens so even if you have entered double percentage sign and the single quotes inside it then also it is empty okay it's not like it will not be empty now let's enter some value here let's just enter word okay and then this action should be executed so what I will do is I'll just click on run see it has displayed the value of new var 2 right so this is how you can use if else action in power automate desktop if you like this video please click on the like button and please subscribe my youtube channel and if you have any question please post it in the comment section thank you for watching have a great day